All right. <laughs> you know, I have, um, oh, let me try backing up a little bit. Ooh. Yeah, that's a little better. I actually have, oh, what are you seeing back over here? Messy studio. What can you do? I actually have video equipment that I got last year or for Christmas after I did Vlogmas and then proceeded to not really use it. <laughs> so here I'm, I'm trying it. So we'll see what happens. I think from what I can tell, um, uploading files from the video camera is actually pretty easy. Although if I'm out and about using my uh, iPhone is a lot easier. So we'll see what happens. Um, of course, I haven't been out and about much, but that's because we only had one car. So if Bruce had, you know, a substitute gig, then he got the car and I was at home, which is fine because most of my work is at home. Um, but, you know, even with the two cars, I've been here because there's a lot to work on. Anyway, that being said, so today, after <laughs> dealing with insurance issue number two, um, what I really wanted to focus on today is, is getting that freaking big loom set up with the next project. Um, and it leads me to a question that somebody asked um, really recently in the comments, but I'll get to that in a minute. So part of my, my problem is I, I kind of overthink what this, um, what warping this loom should be. You know, part of me wants to overthink the, the warp yarn that should go on it. Now, I did this wrap here on that loom. This is the first, this is the first project I, is this the first project I did on the, yeah, this is the first project I did on that loom. Or is it? Yeah, this is the first project. <laughs> This is the first project I did on that loom. And the warp, um, I did use some of my hand spun in there, um, which wasn't necessarily that tiny either. It was, it was, it was kind of on the bulky side. And it's not that I necessarily want to use a lot of bulky hand spun yarn in the warps. I just like having that option. But at the same time, you know, most of my art weaving is uh, I think a lot of what makes it really wonderful and the texture work really well. What is beeping? Something's beeping. <laughs> I have to get used to this, this, this camera. It's beeping at me and I don't know what that means. Okay. So, <clears throat> so anyway, so I, and I did use some thinner warps, but I think the thinner warps tend to, um, tend to give me more room to add some of the thicker yarns kind of in the same way that I was doing on my rigid heddle. I think I'm just overthinking it. I, I really am, honestly. So I think if I kind of carry on with using some of the sock yarns and, and some of the novelty yarns that I used on my smaller rigid heddle, then I'll be okay with this. So, um, which leads me to the question, um, well, wait, before I get to that, I wanted to show you what I thought about using. I have this hand spun, which I think would be terrific in there. And I think it goes well with this. And I also have this mill end, which is this kind of weird purpley thing. And I have this novelty, which I think will pop out a little texture. That's really cool. And I was going to add this hand spun and this worsted weight yarns but you know what i think i think that warp's going to be thicker than i really want it to be i i think that would be okay if i was doing more of an art yarn type of warp like i do with this scarf that i did in la during last year's vlogmas that's not how i want to do it this time i really want to do more like more like uh 
this. Something more like this type of thing, which, which is my normal art yarn weaving. So I think if I just stick with, now here I use, this looks like it's all sock yarn and a little novelty. I don't even think there's any hand spun in here. <clears throat> so I could do that anyway but I tell you what I really I I've refound discovered this skein you see it's it's been a while since I've been through my stash clearly because I totally forgot about this skein of yarn I think I spun this up last year and I love this so but you know what I think this needs to be treated like that that art yarn scarf so and I don't think that this is going to fit through the heddles of the big loom. So I might have to save this for my little loom. Or I might try um, a technique that Jazz Turtle had on her blog <clears throat> that somebody had mentioned in the group, in the Fiber Art Collective, about using key rings um, to make your own heddles on your loom. And that, But then I wouldn't use, well, I don't know, I might, my, it, this might actually fit through my read. I'll have to play with it. Anyway, this is <laughs> this is me kind of feeling like I'm on the edge of overthinking it. All right, so back to the question. Somebody asked a couple of days ago about the length of, actually probably a couple of weeks ago. Somebody asked um, a few weeks ago, ago about how long do I usually make a scarf? And my general rule of thumb is straight up 80 inches. <laughs> I know, it's kind of weird. Um, but I think it has to do with what I like for me. Now, for me, I've got a wider body. For, I'm short, but I'm, I'm a big girl. So I think for me, I like to wrap it around twice and then have enough to kind of tie over like that. All right. So this is like all up in my face, but it's covering up all of this. <laughs> so, oh, and I usually try to get my hair out of there. Anyway, so this is, this is generally what I like to do with it. Or even if I don't tie it over, you know, just having it, you know, kind of really close up around my face because I, this is, this is, this is a winter wear type of scarf. This is an outer wear scarf for me um, because it's so thick. All right, so this, and I think I went over using this one as a measurement for in the video that I did a few weeks ago on how to calculate your warp. All right, so reference that because I had some good resources for worksheets. But this uh, big old thing is... Oh dear God, please let this tape measure be long enough to measure this easily. All right. Um, and it's not. All right. So there's 60 inches there. 60 plus 60 plus 19. 60 plus 19. So that's 79 inches. And that's not including the fringe. And the fringe I made you know, since it's a big old scarf, proportionately long-ish. You know, I even think that I would have been okay with even a little longer fringe. I definitely wouldn't go shorter. So the fringes were 9 inches. Probably 10, given that it, there's some shrinkage when I twist it together. Alright, so 10 inch fringe on each end. So, so that's, um, anyway, but I will go back and plug into the calculator um, that length for, for that scarf. And I think that's the case with all of these. And this one, you know, I like this width. I mean, I tend to, see I did this absolutely boring scarf, which, but I love the scarf, don't get me wrong. This is a great scarf. It's just, it was, there's, there's not a lot to it. It was kind of boring to, to weave. This one is, I don't do centimeters. Let's see. This is this is 17 inches wide. 
and I did it on my um, on my big rigid head on my uh, harp my Kromsky harp so it probably was and this is like a little a little bit fold I mean it's it shrunk up together and this is a sock yarn this is a spin cycle sock yarn I love her stuff anyway but this one is 18 inches wide but it's of course a thinner fabric it's not as bulky um, so I probably would have gone maybe just a hair longer I would have been okay going a hair longer because I can because this would have been good to really tie tie over and I'm not really getting that without well maybe I should choke myself a little more <laughs> okay yeah this one yeah this one could have I could have stood to have this one just a hair longer well that's not too bad no that's not too bad but I probably I probably could go I probably could have gone another six inches on this okay so let's see how long this one is this one is there's 60 oh you see this one's way shorter this one's This one is 68 inches long with, and then the fringe is much shorter. The fringe is only, the fringe is only five inches. So I probably did 72 inches on the loom and then just a little, and, and then, but that includes the fringe. So I probably did six inches of so an extra 12 inches. So it was 80 something. So I probably should have gone a bit longer on that. Um, using that calculation and just started with an 80 inch scarf, right? So if I had started with 80 inches that I wanted to get and then did my calculations, I would have probably come out with something a little longer that I would have liked better. So this one, now the skinny scarves, the skinny scarves, I tend to be okay with going longer, like crazy longer. And so this one is probably going to be like insanely longer because this, this is like past my belly here. And there's like way plenty of room to, to flop it over. But I think too, when I'm going pretty skinny, you know, it's all this rules of proportions. When I'm going with a skinnier scarf, I tend to want it to be longer um, and that's just a personal preference I wouldn't want that much fabric when it came to like this I want you know the thicker fabric to be bunched up here but since this isn't as bunched up here I'm okay with going much longer I mean I would even be okay if I had a long piece here and then had just a piece that hung down my back. It just all depends on how you like to wear your scarves. All right, so this one, this one, I, I mean, given what I just showed you there, I probably would be okay with this one being longer too. All right, so this one is, let's see, I've got the fringe on this is right at five inches, so I probably did, again, a six inch fringe. Um, and then, all right, so there's, there's 60, sixty plus, oh yeah, this is way longer, 60 plus, 60 plus 35, so, and, and I'll be honest, with this this kind of scarf, 60 plus 35, 60, so it's 95 inches long, and that's not including the fringe, which it looks like it's another foot of fringe. Um, that's six inches on each side. So this one, I could even go a little longer, like I said, just based on the way I tend to like to wear this kind of skinny scarf. So I probably, and the thing about this one is though, um, I didn't, I didn't do as, 
vigorous of a wet finish as I did with this one. I mean, this is a sock yarn. I like hot water, scrunchy, and then and then just cut, and it shrunk up a lot. This one I I did soak it, but I wouldn't want run it through the wash, and I definitely wouldn't do hot water on it because there's a lot of delicate wools in here that would really really felt, and that's not what I wanted to, that to happen. So, and there's some scarves that I don't even really finish. I mean, I might do a a slight soak just to kind of get things to marry together, but cold water, you know, um, just nothing. Or do I do warm water on these? I think I do do warm water because cold water would really shrink some of this up, but I just don't do an extreme, like, you know, cold and hot one. I mean, this one, since it was a sock yarn, it pretty much was, was a washable wool. All right, so this one... You know, I'm probably, 95 is probably close to what I did. But usually, I guess, um, back when I was doing this series of scarves, I think when I, when I would measure it out, I would do, I would do like 10 feet, which is 10 times, which is, uh, I can't do my math. It hurts my brain. Um, I probably wasn't doing 10 feet. Because I think on the... Yeah, 12 feet is about the most that I could get on the smaller rigid head of the loom without it, like, interfering with the mechanism. So, so if this is... No, that's about right, because 10 feet... So probably 120 inches. Yeah because 10 feet is 120 inches my brain this this is a lot of math <laughs> it's hurting my brain okay so so yeah so this was probably started out as 120 inches and I would do it with a warping peg and do approximately 10 to 12 feet because that's as much as my my loom would hold so so if this is 10 feet then yeah I could probably have added a couple more feet to it and you know, and gone with, uh, with, uh, four yards, four yards, 12, 12 feet, four yards. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So this is, so that's how I kind of figure it with the smaller loom, because honestly, um, I couldn't do much more than that. Now look at this big weird thing. I mean, that looks like it's about to like totally fall off of there. <laughs> you see that? It looks like a little furry dingleberry thing, which is terrible. So how would I fix that? Hmm. Yeah, I might do something to tack that over here. I don't know. I'll have to look at that. Oh, and look, and this is, this, this is all caught up here. This little bead accent is, yeah, some of these need fixing. I think it's because I've been tossing the bag around and it's they're getting kind of messed up a little bit. So I probably need to go back through and re-sew some of that on. Okay. So anyway, that's kind of just the, you know, that's just generally what works for me as far as um, figuring out how long I like my scarves. I know some people don't even like to wrap them around their neck and just like to have them draped you know, like under your lapel of your, your jacket. And that's a whole nother ball of wax. I mean, that's a different length. So if you have, you know, an idea and you're planning out your next project, kind of get an idea of what, of how you want this to be worn. Because that's totally going to dictate how long you want to make your warp. I mean, I think this one is, this is that one from last year's Vlogmas. Okay, so let me measure that. You know, and this is the one, there's there's like sections where I just didn't weave it at all. Okay, so if I'm measuring this one, let's see, there's, uh, 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 60 inches plus, plus another 10 ish inches. So it's like 70 inches. But it has like 
super long fringe. All right, so let me see. That fringe is bananas. Wait, hold on. Oh, this scarf is grabbing onto everything. Okay, let's see. Oh yeah, this is this is like 11 inch fringe. So probably on the loom it was like 12 inches. It was like a foot long fringe on e each end. Which I mean, given the style of the scarf, okay, so I have this really super long fringe here, right? But given the style of the scarf where the warp, which is the same as the fringe, is what's the hero in the scarf. I mean, if you look at it, I mean, really the weaving is just some lace weight yarn tacking, tacking the warp yarns together. The warp yarns are the hero of this, and that's what makes this fringe. So going nuts with the fringe kind of is, is like giving you a freeform version of what this this major yarn is you know the main yarn is so anyway so given that you know again I would wrap it around a couple of times and maybe you know I'd, I'd let that hang pretty long because that's where you know that's where the money is is that fringe Either that, or I would, and let that drape down my back. Let me see. Let's see, get that a little, and then let that drape down my back. With the, maybe put a pin there to kind of hold it together. Or, let's see, probably do something like that. And then pin it here, so then that would hang down my back. All right. So that's how I would, anyway, so there it is. That's, that's how I would figure the length for the scarves. And that being said, I'm back to the drawing board. You know, I did, maybe I'll, I'm, no, I'm going to start with the sock yarns, sock yarns. But I think I'm going to keep this crazy banana stuff in place. I mean, can you imagine knitting a big old sweater out of this? It'd look like, you know, a Muppet pelt. It's a Patton's Allure. I don't even know if they make it anymore. This is this is like a Michael's yarn. Um, so I'm going to build the palette around this, as nuts as that seems. But you know, this color looks really, really, really good with. Oh wait, yeah. See now, look at this. See, here's some old warps that I was playing with. So I've got this yarn, right? And I'm here to tell you the brightness of this blue does not translate onto onto the camera. I mean, I can't even I can't even explain how saturated this is right here. Anyway, but it looks really good with that kind of creamy beige color because it really makes those it's it's in contrast those yellows pop and then I have a little bit of this brown right here so I might start with something like this and then I also have oh yeah I need to do this see because I also have this silk this is actually I think this is Pigeon Roof Studios the label tells me nothing it's either Pigeon Roof Studios or it's, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. If not, it could be like an old, old, old funky Carolina. I don't think she was doing silk. I don't remember, <laughs> but it's a hand painted. Somebody's hand painted. I'm pretty sure it's Pigeon Roof Studios. Anyway. But that looks really good together here. So I might start with that and add some more blues. And maybe a little sparkle. Alright. See? You guys are my accountability this month. So, I'm ready to go. I'm going to do this. Alright, I'm signing off. Alright. Let's hope that I don't have to re-record this because I'm trying out the equipment. Alright. Thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting. And I will see you guys tomorrow.